Praise the Lord. Good evening. The Lord is good. All the time. Wow. Wow. I believe somebody here tonight, this could be your best day ever. And to somebody tonight, this is your special divine appointment. And just pray that you don't miss anything God has for you today. Even those who may be watching online. Last night, people were watching online all over Europe, even in Africa. <laughs> last night. They are watching by 1 a.m. in the morning. 2 a.m. in the morning. Hallelujah. And it is very important we don't underestimate what God is doing. The Lord Jesus said, you cannot cast your pearls before the shrine. Holy things are holy. They are very precious and important to God. And we have to understand that God can give us a chance and after a while, take it away. If we don't value it. But I pray that tonight in this place, the mercy of God, as already the pastor already prophesied already tonight, that the mercy of God will be upon many and give them another chance to regain back what they have lost. Father, we thank you tonight. And I bow before you, Lord, in this place tonight and worship you, O God. And I exhort and adore you in this place. Lord, you know I am not without you. Holy Spirit, do your work in me and through me tonight. Use me, Lord, as your vessel to communicate your heart and your mind and thoughts and manifest your mighty works tonight in this place. Let every powers of Satan now be bound. In Jesus' name, amen. I don't know about you, but we are living, I believe you know that already, we are living in a very, very strange time. Only a, even a blind person will know that we are living in very strange times. Even the blind knows that the times are strange and difficult and um, unpredictable. Even in the, the weather, the patterns is changed. And people don't even know anymore what is right or wrong or what is what. What is church? What is family? What is man? What is woman? What is child? Nobody knows nothing anymore. If we really want to know, we have to get back to the book of truth. The Bible. We have to get back to the word of God. Or else we will be carried away with everybody else. Here in Matthew chapter 12. There's a story here, and the Lord was the Lord was really, really, you know, uh, grieving over the cities and the nations and people that have had a great opportunity but missed it. Chapter twelve of Matthew, verse thirty-eight. Then certain of the scribes and of the Pharisees answered, saying unto him, saying, "Master, we would see a sign from thee." But he answered and said unto them. An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. And there shall no sign be given to it but the sign of the prophet Jonas. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the well's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it because they repent at the preaching of Jonas. And behold... A greater than Jonas is here. The queen of the south shall rise up in the judgment with this generation and shall condemn it. For she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And behold, a greater than Solomon is here. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest and findeth none. Then he said, I will return unto my house from whence I came out. When he's come, he found it empty, swept, and garnished. Then goeth he and taketh with himself seven other spirits more 
wicked than himself. And then they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. We, as believers and as a church, have to understand the times we live in. The Lord here was speaking about cities and people and nations who were given great opportunities. People who heard him teach, who heard him heal and saw his miracles and tested his power, experienced his grace and uh, but yet, they never, never repented. Jonas went to Nineveh and preached. You know the story of Jonas in the bells, in the well's belly. And when he preached there, the people, the king and everybody fell on their knees, fasted, prayed, repented, burned down all their idols. Just at the preaching of Jonas, the queen of the south heard of the wisdom of Solomon and came from the utmost parts of the earth to hear Solomon's wisdom. And today, in the town we live in, pastor was prophesying. Before judgment comes, God always send a message of repentance. Before Nineveh was to be destroyed. God sent Jonas to warn them. And they choose to repent. The present day, not, not just the unbelievers, not even the hidden, but the present day Christians, the present day church is heading for a destruction. Because most of the people in the church doesn't know the word repentance. And without repentance, there's no life. If you are in a church where most of the people in the church doesn't know the word repentance, they can never tell you, one day in my life, I heard God's word. I was so deeply convicted that I made a 180 turnaround. If that has never happened to you, you are not saved. You can be a preacher, you can be a pastor, you can be a bishop, you can be a pope, you are on your way to hell. God has no right to send any man to heaven who have never repented of their sins. He has no right to do it. And he will never do it. Never do it. God has no right to save any person who have not repented. That is why he had to send his son to the cross. So that he might have the right to forgive the person who repents. In the Old Testament, all the Old Testament believers, they didn't go to heaven. They went downstairs to paradise. Because God has no right to send them up first. So we have to understand. Jonas preached. And they never bowed their knees. Today, the world has a strong hold on the believers. There's no difference between the believer and the unbeliever. We eat what they eat, we drink what they drink, we talk like them, behave like them, dress like them. There's no difference. That is why the power of God is lacking in the churches. That is why the glory of God is not visible. That is why what we receive doesn't remain. So here the Lord was saying that this is how it will be with this very generation. When demons are cast out of a person, those demons don't go and commit suicide. They go through a season of dryness, having no place to stay. After a while, they said, oh, let me see if my old home is still empty. 
that boy, that girl from where I was cast out. Let me see if it is still available. And if he comes back, listen, we are in a time where you see backsliders become the most tortured people on earth. Christians are playing with destruction. We are playing with the doom. The devil know his time is short. And this time, if you give him any opportunity, when he steps back in, that's it for you. So, the Lord says, the demons, the evil powers, they will go through season of dryness and torture and torment. And if they come back to that very person and find the person empty, Then he would say, oh, I still have a chance in this person. This time, I won't get in there alone. I'm going to go find more dangerous demons. We're going to come there and dwell there. I have, listen, I've been in Christ for some time. I have seen people fall away from God, from church, and they ended up committing suicide. They became worse. The, the Lord said here, and the, that person's condition will become worse than before. If God has set you free from adultery, or from nicotine, or from gambling, or from stealing, or from prostitution, if you just keep yourself empty, empty, if the demons come back, <laughs> if you are playing around with strange, strange flesh, Open your eyes to pornography. And you come to church, God give you grace, God will give you grace, God, will, and then you keep on playing with the same thing. The time is coming when the evil powers will come in and they will no more go out. This time, you will become something totally, completely destroyed. I want to warn the church. America still have some little chance. You better wake up now. If the demons come back, and listen, we are in the last days. The devils are coming back. They are not even going far. They are hanging around 24-7 to look for a chance. He is moving around like a roaring lion. So if God sends an anointed man of God, a pastor, a leader, or people like us, we come around and God's glory comes down and you are liberated. And the next day you go back smoking dope. The anointing is not for fancy, it's not for game. Okay, I'm going to smoke again, drink. When he comes again, I'm going to be free again. No, 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 no. You better watch out. The, the Lord just said, if, if he comes back and find the house garnished and empty, unoccupied. Oh, then he goes. And brings more wicked spirits than himself. When we keep on misusing grace of God, people think, I'm on that grace. That means I can do anything. Go ahead and do anything. But the demons will find their chance in your soul. People are playing with grace, you know, grace, grace, grace. Grace is God empowering you to do what you cannot be able to do by your own power. That's what grace is. He empowers you. So, and the demon powers goes about and brings some more seven evil powers and come into that very person. And then it says, and the, that person's condition will become worse. And so shall it be with this generation. Some of the most destroyed people today are people who used to be in church. People who used to be Christians, who used to be pastors, elders, deacons. They are the, some of the most destroyed people on earth today. Why? Because when they came to God, they didn't honor him as God. They did not take their Christian life as they ought to take it. 
They played around with grace and with sin and with vanity. And then the devil put them away because of some one problem or the other, some argument, some problem in the church. They get offended. They get angry. They get bitter. They complain about the church and about the pastor, about everything. The devil will make you get offended so he can get you out. You know, if he gets you out, he will ruin you. Some Christians are walking like vagabonds, going from here and there and from here and there. They have no root in the ground. When those powers come back and they see the house just garnished, huh. he said, number one, empty, swept, and garnished. <laughs> empty. What is that? Who's an empty Christian? An empty soul. That means. There's no substance in their believing. It's empty. Nothing is real. Nothing is firm. They have no conviction. They have no persuasion. It is just garnished. It's a show. It's a game. There's nothing there. It's trash. There's no substance. It's empty. When a Christian is empty, empty of what? Empty of the anointing. If a person like me goes empty, <laughs> demons will celebrate in hell. <laughs> they will trouble even when you are full. How much more? The Bible says, Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost. Tell me being full of the Holy Spirit. You see, if you don't want to be empty, you have to be full. Full of what? Full of the Holy Ghost. Filled. And understand this. Today, people think being full of the Holy Ghost is just praying in tongues and, or having the power, praying for the sick and preaching. That's great. But you have to understand, in the Old Testament, God told Moses, I don't have time to read all that for you there in the book of uh, Exodus, but he told Moses to make a special anointing oil with a special spices. It was never to be duplicated. This anointing oil was to be used in anointing priests. Anointing the priests and also anointing the tabernacle of fellowship. It was such a holy anointing oil that whatever touches it becomes holy. The present day church does not know the word holy. We make so much noise, but no power. We are so busy and so active. We think being busy will make get you over the problems. No, 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 no. So this special anointing oil was to be used to anoint the priests and their garments. Aaron, his sons. The moment that oil is poured on anything or touches anything, whatever it touches becomes holy. Now, tell me, whatever the oil touches becomes holy. Holy there means it is no more for common use. It is no more for public consumption. It becomes completely separated to the use of God only. Say with me the use of God only. Say again the use of God only. You see, it becomes something devoted, something dedicated, something anointed, something separated. It is no more for common use. In fact, when that thing is anointed, if your shirt touches it, it becomes holy also. You have to pull off your shirt and leave the shirt on the altar. Whatever it touches becomes God's own. You can no more take it outside of the house of God. So the anointing oil was, was to be poured upon the priests. Their garments. Not only that, it was Moses was to anoint every vessel in the tabernacle with the anointing oil. The chairs, the spoons, the knives, the vessels, everything 
in the for the use of God was anointed. Without being anointed, you can never serve God. Only what is anointed, and only those who are anointed with the oil of the anointing can serve God. Without anointing, you don't dare come near holy things. Only a holy person can touch holy things. Today, unholy people are touching holy things. Well, they are no more holy. We are in the season and time where God must cleanse his house. He must cleanse his people. He must bring fear back in the house of God. You remember the story there in the book of Daniel? This king, Nebuchadnezzar, has come against Israel and uh, destroyed the temple and uh, took all the holy vessels in the temple to Babylon. Put it in the house of his God. And so this, this other king, Belteshazzar, came over and was ruling one night. He has a big party for all his concubines and widows and generals. And as they were eating and drinking, you know, he said, hey, go get me some of those golden spoon, golden cups that came from Jerusalem. Bring those special cups from the temple. Let me, let's eat, let's drink with them. You know the story. They brought the cups from the temple of God in Jerusalem and, and, and they poured wine and, and drank out of it and praised the God of gold and silver. The Bible said, while he drank with those cups, the finger of God wrote on the screen of the wall, take it, take a many of us in. The king saw the finger writing on the wall. His knees buckled and he froze. Today, the average Christian does not know the word holy and doesn't want to know. That is why we still sleep in our bed with misery. That is why we, we are God's people, but we are the most depressed. That is why the power of God is not evident. We go through the motions, but nothing is really there. And, and if something comes in, it doesn't last a week. Why? Because there's no holiness. The moment the oil of the anointing comes on a person, comes on you, you are no more a common person. From that day forward, you are sanctified. You are separated. You are purified. You become holy. You are no more again to eat common things, drink common things, look at common things, watch common things, dress carelessly. You are now holy. You are now separated unto God. You are no more a common person. You can't just go anywhere. You can't just eat anything. You can't just drink anything. You can't just watch. Why? Because you are holy. Why? Because you are anointed. The anointing is not just to give you power to preach. The anointing, number one, is to separate you. Because the anointing is holy. You shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come out upon you. And we think, oh, when the Holy Ghost comes upon me, I have the power, I will heal the sick, I will cast out devil. No, no, no. The first work of the anointing is to make you holy. The first work of the Holy Ghost, when it comes on you, is to make you holy. That means you are now separated. You are now sanctified. You are now a vessel unto God. You are no more now a common person. Can somebody say hallelujah? I can hear the cry of the Holy Spirit. Chapter 30 of Exodus. It pains me when I see Christians suffering defeat. It pains me. People start saying, pray for me. I'm hearing voices. Pray for me. I'm depressed. Pray for me. I have nightmares. Pray for me. I can't sleep in the night. Why? Why? I'm a believer. I'm a Christian. Why? Why? Because we don't know what the word holy means. We are believers, but we still expose ourselves to every trash on earth. Hmm. 
And the demons got their chances. The anointing is to make holy. Wow. Chapter 30 of Exodus, verse 24 says these words. And it says here, and of cassia, 500 shekels after the shekel of the sanctuary, and of oil, olive, and heen. And thou shalt make it an oil of holy ointment, an ointment compound after the art of the apothecary, it shall be an holy anointing oil. And thou shalt anoint the tabernacle of the congregation therewith, and the ark of the testimony, and the table, and all his vessels, and the candlestick, and his vessels, and the altar of incense, and the altar of burnt offering with all his vessels, and the lava, and his foot. And thou shalt sanctify them, that they may be most holy. Whatsoever toucheth them shall be holy. And thou shalt not Aaron and his sons and consecrate them that they may minister unto me in the priest's office. And thou shalt speak to the children of Israel, saying, This shall be an holy anointing oil unto me throughout your generations. When the anointing comes upon a person, it makes you holy, and then the anointing becomes your personal protection. People, most of, people like us would have, would have been destroyed for a long, long time. But because of the anointing, we have a shield, an invisible shield of divine protection. <laughs> I was flying here last Friday. <laughs> I had some of the most turbulent flight. 40 minutes to the, to the landing, you know, the weather was so bad. I saw that before I left. I saw it several times. I, I, I don't want to scare my wife there. <laughs> All right. I, I don't tell the story. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> I think she'll be watching me. I didn't want to tell her that. But anyway. <laughs> okay. Let me tell you a different story, okay? <laughs> now you never know who's watching you. <laughs> but I, I was flying to, to Milan in Italy. I was flying there to Milan. It was in November. I mean, I, the, I mean the weather was so bad. And the, our plane just lost it. It was a thick, thick cloud of darkness. The water was so thick on the Alps. The plane was bouncing up. People were hiding under their chairs. Catholics were doing like that. People were doing like that. I stood up. I said, I am not going down today. Satan, I am here. In the name of Jesus, I bind you in Jesus' name. Plain, I command you to go to Milan and land safely. Everybody froze. I was the, my voice filled the entire plane. I began to pray in tongues. In the name of Jesus, I stood up and screamed. People, people do like that to me. When we, the, the, the lady beside me said to me, something would have happened if you didn't pray. I'm not a Christian, but your prayer helped me. When I was leaving the plane, the pilot did like this. They were doing like that. You know. <laughs> Listen, we are in the most dangerous season of the human race. You don't want to play with your own protection. It is a matter of life and death. This is not church anymore. This is no more religion. Your property, your car, your house, demons are going on rampage. Bullets are flying. Terrorism, they are killing, they are destroying. There's violence everywhere. Our only security is the cloak of the anointing. If you break that hedge of divine protection, that is why you can never do me anything and I hate you. God forbid. So, because it's a play, you, we are playing with destruction. We are playing with the grace of God. So, understand this. The anointing was number one to make you holy. Totally, completely separate you. You are no more a common person. You see, the, the church 
in the olden times, the church were up here. They were all long gowned and long sleeves and head tied and singing holy, holy, holy. And nobody was joining them because the ones, okay, goodbye. Then the church said, let's try to behave like sheep in wolf's clothing. So we might save the world. So they cut their skirts, cut their hat, put earrings, remove their head tie, and say, let's go down and act like we are wolves. So we can have the chance to save the wolves. So the church came down from their place of holiness and separation to see if they can reach out to the wall. But the more they try, the more they follow the wall. The wall draws them. The world, and we get so so much to the water, we forget to get back up. So now we are dressing like them, talking like them, we forget our identity. Some of your grandmas will cry in the grave when they see how you dress today. When they see how what we do today in the name of God, they will they will vomit. We were, the church was trying to, let, let's try to save the world. Let's go down. Let's dress, let's put ear in. Today we are doing tattoos and everything. Why? And I'm a Christian. Don't judge me. Don't, no, the demons will judge you. There was a time the word divorce was never mentioned in the church. Today, it is a common thing. We, we were trying to save the world and we lose our soul. You, we have to know how far we can go with the world and get back up. We go, we go up, we refresh ourselves, renew ourselves, we go down, we get back up. But now, most of the Christians today don't even know how it used to be. Because we went down to get the world. We keep on chasing them like a mirage. And we are dragged to the pit like them. The anointing comes upon you to separate you. I have a very big uh, stage for open air crusade in Czech. Very nice. Pastor Mitch saw that. So we, were there. we used it for our outreach when you came. Very beautiful stage, you know, very nice. And I use it for all our equipments when I'm preaching this in the open air meetings. So one day, this, some men stood there watching this stage and looking around it and going around and looking. Well-dressed men. And after that, they said to me, uh, who made this for you? How did you get this? I said, I designed it and gave it to the, to the firm to produce it. I said, wow. I said, yes, I told them what to do. They said to me, can you rent it for us? We want to use it for a crusade, for, a, for, for um, um, election campaign. I said, oh, oh, I am sorry. This one is holy. They said, what, what, is, they said, what is holy? I said, it is anointed. They say, what is anointed? I say, it's only for the things of God. It's not for public consumption. They say, you can't give money. I say, no, this is beyond money. They, because people think everything on earth is money. They say, money can buy anything. Somebody came to me, can you, can you rent to us your, your piano? We want to use it for some, what, what do you want to do with it? Oh, we want to just make some Saturday, you know, kind of party somewhere. Oh, oh, sorry. This is holy. They say, what is holy? It is anointed. What is anointed? It's only for God. It only plays a hallelujah music. Listen, God can, God will take his hand of protection from you and let you experience hell till you learn holy. He will take his hand from your home, your family, your life. Let you experience torture and torment till you learn holy. The anointing separates. The anointing protects. It's your defense. It's your wall of defense. Demons cannot get around it. Years ago, the devil said to me, if you go out tonight, I'm going to kill you. He tried. And I, I said, Lord, how do I punish this 
stupid thing. He said to me, don't worry about him. I have drawn a line between you and him. He will not cross the line. He will not touch your life. The anointing. The wall of protection. That was why death couldn't kill Moses. Till he removed his dress. Death couldn't kill Aaron. As long as he was wearing that anointed dress. Nobody can kill him. God said, Aaron, remove your dress so you might die. Because as long as he wears that cloak that's anointed, not even hell can touch him. He becomes untouchable. God wants his children to be untouchable. He said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Why is hell prevailing against us today? Because we don't know holy. Holy. That means you are separated. You are no more a common person. You are God's own child. You are a new creation. The Holy Ghost is upon you. You are anointed. You are separated. Your body is a temple of the living God. Honor God in your life. And God will honor you. Why are we always struggling with sin? Rising and falling. Rising and falling. Why? We prayed here. We are up. We are down. We are up. That's not the way. You Listen. We should stop making the Christianity cheap. Tell the people the truth. <laughs> now, I don't want to scare those of you with baptizing tomorrow, okay? <laughs> I don't want to scare you from coming to be baptized. But you have to understand the word holy. You come to a place where you are separated, you are sanctified, your car, your house, your property. I had one of our sisters in, in our church in Prague. She brought her car for dedication. For when they, our people, when they buy a car, they bring it to the church so I can anoint it. So, and so I anointed her car. She bought a new car. And she parked a car in the line. And there were three cars before her and three cars b- behind her. A truck came. Destroyed the tree before, behind. Destroyed the tree before. Her car was the only car left untouched. Why? It's anointed. God's presence watches over it. A special cloak of divine presence. An aura. A mystery. Of protection. It's, you don't die common death. You don't suffer what everybody suffers. If you understand the anointing and live under it, God, God wanted to make a difference with us, like He did in Egypt. All the plagues that came upon the Egyptians, none of them touched the Jewish people. Why? They were anointed. They were under the blood. If you go outside that room that night, you're gonna die. They stayed under the blood. Every home that's anointed was protected. In this end time, many Christians will suffer terrible loss. In their health, in their life, in their marriage, in their property. None of you don't because you don't believe in God or you don't know, you know you're going to hell. No, but you, you don't know holy. You are living like an ordinary common person. You are carnal and sensual. You still think you are your own. You don't know the word holy. Holy means you are anointed. You are no more a common person. You don't eat what everybody eats. You don't drink what everybody drinks. You don't watch what everybody watches. I can't imagine myself using the Holy Ghost eye to watch pornography. God forbid it. Holy. You are anointed. You are separated. People say, oh, there's a flu going on. I say, "Uh uh-uh. It won't cross the line. (laughs) Somebody say hallelujah. I had my friend in a bus in Africa. He was in a bus. There was about 15, 51 people there from different nations. They were in that bus. And the bus had a terrible accident. Everybody died except him. 
everybody died. When, when people came to see what happened, he was under the heap of dead bodies. And he, he starts shaking up, pushing the bodies out. My friend Gideon, he pulled it off and come out. And, oh, what was that? Everybody died except him. God wants to make a difference between what is holy and unholy. In this end time, there's tragedy everywhere. There's fears everywhere. There's viruses, chaos, accidents, wrecks, demonism, pollution, defilement. God wants his children to sanctify themselves. Clean your house. I have young people come to our, who are in our church. They buy their car. They bring the car. They say, Pastor, I want you to anoint my car. I said, okay, bring the car. Let's anoint the car. Let's dedicate the car to God. I said, that, that means you don't, you don't curse in this car. You don't lie in it. You don't go take a, pick up a girl somewhere and play around in the car. Why? Because the car is anointed. You don't drive this car to the disco. If you do, it is sacrilege. This is why we are empty and miserable. Holy. Holy is the prime word of, the, of, of faith. It's holy. It's being anointed. It's being dedicated to God. I said, your car is anointed? Yeah. People think, okay, anoint my car so that God will protect it. Huh. The protection is by the anointing. And the anointing means that this, my car, is holy. It's only for God's purpose. I'm not going to be drinking there and gambling there and cursing there and kissing there and hugging there and doing all kinds of trash in that place. If you let that be, God will protect that very car. But if the car is for common use like anybody else, well, it can wreck, it can crash, whatever can happen to it. People, our people in our church, they come to me, they say, Pastor, I have got a new house, I got a new apartment, please come and dedicate my house or my car. Or uh, my home, my apartment is okay. You, I hope you know what that, what that means. When your home is anointed, you miss, you are inviting God's presence to come there. It becomes like the home of Obededom, the place where the ark of God is tabernacled. Somebody say hallelujah. As long as you reverence God's presence in your house, in your car, in your life, God will see to it that you are protected. I said, that means if you, this house is anointed, you are welcoming this God's presence to dwell here with you. That means you don't watch pornography while your wife is in the bedroom. You don't gamble here. You don't get drunk here. You don't curse here. You don't fight your wife in this home. You, if you do that, you are breaking the hedge of divine protection. You are opening your home for every demons in hell. I tell my children, I have 19, 16, and 10. I say, if you love me, be holy. As long as you're under my roof, whatever you do will affect me. So, no, one of my daughters in the church, one of our girls in the church, she's about 16. She, she told her mom, mom, why can't I do what everybody else is doing? The mom said, oh, because you are holy. Because you're no common girl. Oh, yeah, yeah, I understand. Everybody's, everybody's kissing but me. Everybody's cutting their skirts but me. Everybody got their holes here and their holes there but me. Holes here and holes here but me. Everybody got their legs thrown up but me. Why? Well, you are holy. You are not an ordinary person. Until we understand in this life, we are not ordinary people. You are not just an American. You are sanctified. You are separated. You are holy. If, if we, we are spitting in God's eyes every day. Try this and see. You will see the glory of God descend in your home. The demons will flee from your house. The curse will be broken. You will not be suffering nightmares. 
Go home today, take an oil and anoint your home and your car and your property. And anoint yourself and say, this my body is the temple of the living God. Hallelujah. This my eyes is not a common eye. This is why today in the church, there are no visions, no prophecies, no gifts of the Holy Ghost. Maybe one person or two. It was not so in the Bible. In the church, in, in Acts, people in the church, there are every gift of the Holy Ghost in manifestation. Today, one guru will tell you, I see in the spirit, send me money. Buy my anointing oil with $10,000. Criminals on the internet. Crooks. The anointing is not for sale. Where is the power? Where is the glory? Is this New Testament? Where we are dry, no vision, no revelation, no prophecy, no interpretation, no discernment, no gift of the Spirit? What ought to be common becomes very special. Only once in a while if somebody comes from somewhere. No, my brother says, this is not how it's supposed to be. We are in the last days. When you are anointed, you don't just marry anybody. You don't pick up a boy in the, in the bar and do like that. I'm, I'm also a Christian. A Christian devil. I'm a Christian. I go to victory. Ha! And who is that man you are sleeping with? Is that your husband? Is that your wife? Oh, he's my boyfriend. We just live together. We cohabit. What a shame. And you say you're a Christian? You don't know. Christian, Chris means from the word anointed. Somebody say hallelujah. Oh Lord, you gave me a bad message. I'm going to lose all my, all my friends today. Oh Lord, Lord have mercy. <laughs> but I better tell you the truth. I don't want God to judge me. Hebrews chapter 1. Are you still here with me? Just give me a few more minutes, please. We're going to continue tomorrow. I am believing God for a breakthrough, a mighty change. We must allow the world wholly to enter into our innermost being. Hebrews 1 and verse 9 says, in fact, he said, but unto the son he saith, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever, a scepter of righteousness, a scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy God, had anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellow. If you want to enjoy God, understand the word holy. This is not new, this is not special teaching, this is the basic it is the basic. Every before you can say, I am I am a child of God, I am born again, I am a Christian. It means you are anointed. It means God's hand is upon your life. It means you are no more a common person. You are separated from the world. You can't just be ordinary person because God wants you to carry his presence and his glory to the world. Because you love righteousness. So, the Lord your God anoints you with the oil of gladness above your fellow. The Christian life is a supernatural life. It's a life that is separated unto God. You are sanctified. You are holy. You don't just live like ordinary people. If you do, you will suffer misery. The devil will find a chance and swamp you. He will manipulate your mind and life. You have to go home and clean your house and ask yourself, do I really want to be a Christian? Do, do I really want to be a Christian? Am I, if you don't want to be, don't be. Just go to the world. Stop playing this game. God is tired of it. If you are for God, be for God. You can't just marry anybody. 
You can't just live with anybody or anything. Look at your home. Is it sanctified? How can God protect you when your fridge is full of poison? What do you watch with your eyes? If you watch pornography, how can you see visions? How can the Holy Ghost anoint and use you? How? It's impossible. That's why the church have no gifts of the Holy Spirit. One person or two, once in a while, something, yeah, that's it. God is calling us back to the basics. You shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Holy. You have to understand that. And the Lord will anoint you with the oil of gladness. You never know what joy is till you are being more and more sanctified. Then you will know what it means so that the joy of the Lord is my strength. What people are looking for in the bar and in Pono, you get it in the Holy Ghost. Amen. <laughs> Somebody say hallelujah. What they're looking for in the flesh and in mammon, in the disco, you get it in the Holy Ghost. Just 10 minutes in the Holy Ghost is more than two weeks in the Bahamas. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. The, the stream of joy will flow through your life. What do you need the bar for? What do you need the pono for? You don't need it. You are holy. You are God's own children. You are marked. You are chosen. You are ordained. You are called out of darkness into the light. You are not a common person. Stop thinking common. Think holy. Think righteous. Think separate. You are not an ordinary person. God has chosen you to be his own. He wants you to draw closer to him so he can anoint you more and more and more. And he will become your defense and your protection. He will make sure that your body is quickly healed. When the body is sanctified to God, you don't go through all that sick, 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 sick. All that pen, 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 depression, up and down. No, 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 no. That's why we pray and pray and pray. Nothing happened. Why? That body is not dedicated to God. The body is open for anything. So, power of God cannot flow into it. Many times, God blesses us and heals us in a way of seeing if he can draw you through his goodness. But the more he blesses us with his goodness, the more we think we are okay. So, I will keep on doing what I'm doing. That's not the way it ought to be. Today, in this place, I want to challenge you today. To become conscious and aware that you are anointed. And the struggle with temptation will be broken. You will no more struggle, oh, I don't want to do that. Oh, I don't. No, no, no. When the knowledge dies in your heart, oh, I have chosen this way of the anointing. Temptation will come, it will no more make impact in your life. Because you don't, that door is not open. It's already closed. I am a child of God. I am born again. The Almighty God has chosen me and called me. I am not my own. Christ is in me. I am not my own. He called you, he chose you from your mother's womb. He stamped you, he sealed you with the seal of the Holy Spirit. You are not an ordinary person. You are not a common girl. You are not just an American. You are carrying the seal of God upon your life. You have to get to know who you are. It's a calling. You are chosen by the Almighty to be holy. Loving God, you know what it means to love God? It's being holy. It's, being, it's understanding. That's why he said, come out from among them and be what? Separate. Then I will receive you and I will be a father unto you. 
Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my word. What word? Separate yourself. I have, you've not chosen me, but I have chosen you and called you and ordained you and stamped you and sealed you with my seal. If you love me, keep yourself for me. The church is the bride of Christ. We ought to live clean for the bridegroom. And the Bible said that every one of us should learn how to possess our bodies in sanctification and in honor. You, God cannot protect you if you don't respect his presence in your life. Life will become like an accident. And that's not God's will for you and I. We close with this. First Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 3 says, For this is the will of God. First Thessalonians by chapter 4. For this is the will of God, even in your sanctification, that you should, pause, you, should ab, you should abstain from fornication, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. Listen, divine protection is more than anything. You must be holy unto me, for I, the Lord your God, I am holy. You must sanctify yourselves and be holy, for I am holy. This is the calling. It's not just believing in God. It's not just come to church and sing it. No, no. The, the main thing is, are you conscious of the oil? The oil of the anointing. Do you know you are chosen? Do you know you are called? Do you know you are God's own? Out of all that is in the world, he found you. He chose you. He poured oil on you. The oil of the Holy Spirit. He marked you to be his own. And he said, this one is mine. It's not for public consumption. This is no ordinary man. This is no ordinary home. It is the dwelling place of God's presence. The more we honor his presence, and worship and love and adore the cloak of Shekinah glory descends upon our lives. People will see, they say, there's something about you. They come to your home, they say, oh, what kind of people are that? There's something there. Some kind of peace, some kind of quietness, some kind of, they just, just something peculiar about them. I was there to pick up a car in the airport. The guy that was there, you know, the paperwork, he looked at me and said, Huh, what kind of person you are? He said to me, I like the way you spoke to me. I, I said, are you a Christian? He said, uh-uh. Uh, I, 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 he must be a Muslim guy. I said, well, I, I'm a Christian preacher. I'm a preacher of Jesus Christ. He said, oh, you look at, you keep, look at me. They, they, all of them said, look at me like that. Sometimes you never know what people see when they look at you. I went to the car and uh, to my bag and gave him one of my our, one of our magazines. I said, I'm a preacher. He said, I'm going to find you out online. You know why the preaching of the gospel seems to be harder and harder? Because Christians are not holy. We don't have any convicting power. Our words, our life doesn't convict nobody. <laughs> doesn't convince anybody of sin. Doesn't doesn't challenge nobody. That's why we don't make any impact on earth. When we know holy, people will hear your voice before they even before you even talk. They start shaking. I remember I'm, I remember walking in the street. People will see me. I don't even know them. They, if they are smoking, they see me. They throw away the cigarette. I don't even know who they are. I will see men, men holding women in their hand. When they see me, they lift their hands and go. I don't even know who they are in the street. God is calling your heart. The Father is saying, come home, come home, come, come. Let me sanctify you. Come, let me build a wall of protection around your life and everything you are and everything you have. I want to make a difference in your life. The glory of God will come 
The power of God will overshadow you. The Shekinah glory will surround your life. And you will live and love in the power of the anointing. You will sleep well in the night. No nightmares. God will drive away your enemy when you devote your heart and mind to him. You don't keep any little window open. We're going to continue tomorrow. Did I miss you today? If I did, forgive me. Blame God for it. You must love holy. It is your protection. It will keep you. When everybody is sinking, you'll be rising up. God will be your protection. Under his shadow, under his wings, he will defend all that is yours. The witches won't find you. The occult won't find you. Demons can't enter in. There's a Shekinah glory. Holy is a better insurance against disasters. Because the Almighty God will protect his dwelling place. That your little nest, God will say, uh-uh, not this one. I am responsible for her protection. Because he honors my presence. God's presence sanctifies us. As I'm speaking to you today, there are miracles happening already. Stresses, pressures, Pen is disappearing. Demon powers disappearing. Migrants are gone. It is normal. It is natural. When we are sanctified, when we understand the holy, it is normal. It is natural. The Shekinah glory protects you, preserves you, heals you without you even asking for anything. The glory tabernacles in you. The Shekinah is in and out and all around you. It preserves your mind. Hell cannot enter because you are protected by the anointing. Nothing can kill you. <laughs> Aaron couldn't even die. And God had to tell him, say, Aaron, remove your dress so you might die. Why? Because he's anointed. When you and I honor the cloak of divine anointing, nothing can kill you. It's impossible. You are untouchable. The anointing defends your life. It protects you. That is more than anything. You must be holy. Holy, it doesn't mean don't smoke, don't drink, don't do that. No, no. In holiness, you don't hear that word don't, don't, don't. Holiness is you knowing this is who I am. And those desires will just flee from the window. It, it won't even come. It disappears. It's broken. You don't need to bind and bind and bind. Bind in what? You, you bind less when you are holy. You cast out less when you are holy. I'm holy. I'm a child of God sanctified me. God, it is God's presence that makes you holy. I'm not trying to be holy. I was made holy by his presence. I don't, I don't try to be holy. His presence moves in. All he say, Lord, here I am. Purify me with your presence. I love it. I like it. Because you love righteousness and hated iniquity. Then God anoints you with the oil of gladness above your fellows. While these other girls are struggling and struggling with this and struggling with that. What should I watch? When you are not holy, you are under the law. Do, don't, try, don't, how much, how far can I go? No, but when you are sanctified, the anointing that is in you teaches you all things. You will know what is right and what is wrong. The anointing, will, you will not even, it will, you sense that kind of, you won't even want to think about it. Today, we have been preaching cheap Christianity. 
and nothing, nothing much is happening. I'm going to challenge you tonight to then believe that you are no common person. They believe you are chosen by God. And being chosen, you are separated. You are not an ordinary human being. You are the temple of the living God. Christ is in you. And that's your hope of glory. I'm sorry. I'm a Christian. I'm chosen. I'm called. I am anointed. God separated me from being an ordinary person. That's my destiny. Christ is in me. I have the anointing upon me. And so, I'm different. We are in a, afraid of being different. No, you are different. God have a seal upon your life. You are different. Be who you are. This is really, really who you are. This is who you are. If you know you are a believer, you are a child of God, you are different. You are anointed. You are chosen. You are called. The anointing is upon your life. And you can't just play that common and live common. Then you begin to see the power of God, the glory of God, his presence. Every day. Walk up in the morning and know that I am anointed. I can't just eat anything, drink anything, smoke anything. No, in this body, this body is not my own. I'm sorry. It is a temple of the living God. It is God's house. It is anointed with the Holy Spirit. The oil is poured upon you. Somebody say hallelujah. I'm going to, I'm going to lay hands on us. Many here tonight. Listen, I'm telling you, when you understand this and believe in it and enter into it, forget about those noise on television, those good preaching, charismatic preaching, teaching. Forget it. Thank God for whatever is good there. But this is a fundamental Christian message. And I believe your heart is bearing witness to what I'm saying. That this is it. I believe that. Right in your heart, you know this is it. Don't just try to, you know, impress everybody. Don't try. You cannot be a friend for everybody. You can't just live to people in, dress this way. Either. No, you can't just do that. You are not like them. You are a child of God. This is not religion. The Almighty God knew you and chose you and called you. You can't just live carelessly. You can't just say anything. If you believe this truth, this truth sanctifies you. You won't even struggle not to do it. No, it goes. It cleanses you. You will know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Fornication will flee. No, this is the truth. This is who I am. I am chosen. I am called. It's not, it's not being arrogant. No, 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 no. Just being you. The hand of God is upon your life. You are not just an ordinary person. 